Alright, so this is Diesel for We The People News, and I find this pretty interesting, and uh, I'm not an attorney, so don't take this as any legal advice or anything, this is just assumptions on my behalf, because I found it being weird. Alright, uh, never look straight forward, always look around. Alright, um, this is not commercial or... Uh, commerce video this is just a learning channel uh, and learning see what processes are, are going on all right and how we are being rerouted in certain cases and I think this actually fits the bill perfect on one of them things let me see if I can get this a little bit better there all right so let's Proceed forward on this. Hey Joshua? Yes, sir. I'm Judge Kim. This is a detention hearing. <clears throat> My kids brought in. You have to see a judge within two days. I have to decide whether to keep you here or release you. If I keep you, You'll see a judge every 10 days. You have the right to remain silent. You have the right to an attorney. Mr. Shaw has been appointed as your attorney. Good afternoon, Brad. Good afternoon, Judge. All right, so Joshua, you, you were here as a runaway back in April. So back in May, North Hills responded to a burglary at an apartment complex where suspects were reported to be breaking into cars. When they got there, they detained three suspects. You one of the three. You had an active runaway case while waiting for mom to get there. You stood up, stood up multiple times to attempt to leave. When your mom arrived, you tried to leave, rammed into one of the officers, causing pain. You were subdued by another officer. You tried to pull away, causing both you and the officer to fall, causing an abrasion on the officer's elbow. You three officers to handcuff you. You're charged with assault, public servant, evading arrest. And you have this pending case. You were in Denton County, got in a car accident. We saw that you had a warrant, so they took you in custody. We had a court date for you in July, but you didn't even show up. So we had a warrant for you. Are you mom? Yes, I am. Mom and? Auntie. 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 All right. Does Joshua have a, a driver's license? No. So whose car was he driving yesterday? I don't know. Mom. He's been out since June. He left home. He ran away since June. I just saw him. Uh, oh. Yes. Okay, you notice at this point in time, he, his, you can tell by his eyes, he's like, what the heck? All right. So now he raised his hands after he asked about driver's license about driving a vehicle. Since June, Joshua is gone, yeah. Right now is the first time you've seen him since June? I saw him last Wednesday when the accident happened. I was on the same road. It was just a coincidence. Okay. All right, well, a couple things, Joshua, first. Miss Port, Miss Port, then I just go and detain you because I gotta make sure you come to court and you gotta take care of your business. All right? Second is you are now 17 years old. My policy is when you're 17, if you're not level one outstanding, then I go ahead and house you downtown at Central Lockup with other criminals. If you want to stay here at Kimbo at our juvenile detention facility, I will allow you to as long as you are level one outstanding. You are a good example the other children at our facility. All right, now I see your hand is raised. Do you have a question for me? Do you want to tell me something? Do you want to yeah, tell me something? Clear. I don't, can I finish my statement? All right, so if you want to tell me something, I advise you not to, your attorney advises you not to, because there's a DA here that's listening and taking notes, and I don't want you to get yourself into trouble. So if you have a question for me, I'd be happy to answer it. Yes, what's your question? Why are you asking if I got a driver's license and I want you to drive it? 
Because the police report said that you were involved in a car accident. But I wasn't driving. Okay, so is that a question? That, yeah, I'm asking why you guys can't fire out a driving license. And I just told you. So, did I, I answer your question? License to be in the back seat. Did I answer your question? That's stupid. I need a driving license to be. How about this? Let's go ahead and set them down. Okay. <clears throat> so. The police, uh, I'm assuming, filed a report saying that he was driving this vehicle. But you can kind of tell in his eyes of state of confusion. So it made me leave to believe that he actually was not driving. So now, did they make some type of deal with the other two guys, or did the police officers... Uh, use a retaliation tactic against him and put another charge on him since he was trying to run. Now, remember the other deal on about this, too. They said evading arrest, but he was detained, which you guys already know. Uh, I believe, according to the Texas codes, that detained is custodial arrest. So yes, in all actuality, he'd be evading arrest because it's a custodial arrest, but since they told him he's been detained, then he was not evading arrest. Now he can be evading detainment, but he cannot be evading arrest if he's not under arrest. Now once they got him chained down and everything and again this is assumptions and uh my opinion once they got him chained down and all that they found out about the court's uh missing court later on when they found out his name and all that kind of stuff again this is my opinion this is the way it's sounding in court to uh i okay so Number one, they've been detained for uh, maybe uh, breaking and entering into the cars. Okay. Number two, they've been detained. I probably already brought that up, but they've been detained for this breaking and entering in other cars, right? But he decided to run while he's under detainment after the mom shows up whether he didn't want to deal with his mom or he just wanted to get away from the cops or whatever don't know it's kind of funny how he decides to run when mama shows up all right causes injury to the cops which it is what it is you can still kind of fight back by the supreme courts if it's an unlawful arrest However, it seems like they had the proper cause at this time, of my opinion. Uh, but the driver's license thing and being accused of driving kind of seems like there's a retaliation from the cops or the two other fellers blamed him for it. So I, I'm 100% convinced that this guy was confused about this driving thing. And that's the only thing he was mad about. It's the driving thing. Town to Central Lockup. Hey, fuck you. Oh, you know what? I know. You can sit him back down. <laughs> See, he, he was mad about that. And considering the charges, you know, he's only mad about this driver's license thing. So that right there kind of tells you, wait a minute. Something's been a little fishy on this. Now, at this point in time, I'm just going to let you guys know it's really hard to 
here if you guys want me to do another video on this i'll try to find this video again and put the uh, phone closer to the mic where you can kind of hear background but the whole deal is he is really pissed off about this uh driver's license thing and and uh throwing a little well tension tantrum in the back over this driver's license thing when my client comes back, I, I'd like to uh, tell him not to ask you any more questions. Not to say anything, also. Okay. Well, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna make contempt findings, and then I'll let you talk first. Just right there, just in case you guys didn't hear it or understood it, he plain out says, I man, I don't need a driver's license to be in the back seat. Apparently, even the guards didn't know how to handle the situation. So, it don't happen very often. That, that is my opinion, and I'm assuming it don't happen very often because it, even the security guard or whatever he is uh, didn't know what he was doing.
Here you go, Judge Tim. All right, Joshua. <clears throat> Welcome back. I stood up. You had some choice words for me, so I will. I actually. This, oh, Mr. Shaw, you said you would yeah, have a word. Joshua. Here, but... This is Brad Shaw. I'm your attorney. I, I'm going to advise you to not say anything else. Just be quiet, period, going forward. Uh, you, you don't need to be making any kind of comments whatsoever. You're All right? You understand? All right. So, Joshua, as you were getting up, you actually explicitly said, fuck you, to me. And I understand that is your First Amendment right. However, this is a court proceeding, and you have to behave appropriately for court. So I'm going to find that using such expletives towards the judge. Okay, right here. And this is what gets me about every single court. Right? They are supposed to go by the Constitution. Wink, 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 right? So he understood he had a First Amendment right. However, this is a court. So you don't have constitutional rights in court. Is basically what he's saying. Now, some of you guys go out there and say, well, you know, you got to act um, in good behavior and all that kind of stuff. Um, you can't have it both ways. The judge is either going to act within the guidelines of the Constitution or he's going to act in policies and statutes against the Constitution. But the judge don't get to have it both ways. So what he is doing at this particular time, whether it's good or bad, y'all, I mean, back in the old days, they actually did this because they understood the Constitution. You know, um, I can understand having a certain type of peaceful thing. So, but that being said, it plainly says right here that I understand you have constitutional rights, but since you're in court, you don't have constitutional rights. But the judge is supposed to uphold the Constitution. Come on, judge. You can't do both. Judge is violating the decorum of the court. So, Mr. Shaw, is there any valid legal reason I shall not find, I should not find your client in contempt, direct contempt of court for his choice, actions, and behavior? No. Okay. I understand. Uh, yeah. I did not agree to any of these policy terms that you speak of, Your Honor. That is your uh, policies for your employees. I'm not an employee. I do not. Uh, the policies does not attend to I. And this is where we get confused at. This is the reason why we can't film in court. Because they get to make policies for their employees. But it's not for the people. But yet... They keep forcing it on the people because of the ignorance of the people. Understand? So, Mr. Shaw, then I'm going to ask you: Is do you have any mitigating or aggravating evidence about his contempt of court in me determining what the sanction is for that? Judge, I have no evidence whatsoever. Okay, I understand. I know this caught you by surprise. So, Joshua, what I'm going to do? <clears throat> oddly enough, you were 16 years old. I would be capped at 10 days of confinement uh, as a result of your contempt, since you are now 17 years old. You can suffer the consequences of adult contempt of court. I'm going to find you in direct contempt of court, which is criminal contempt. I'm going to assess a fine of $500. I'm also going to assess uh, confinement in the Tarrant County Jail for a period of six months when your case is done. This will be day for day. There is no two for one on contempt charges. All right, Joshua? So I hope the next time you are in court that you behave appropriately. We're also still going to have... Okay, so in short, y'all... Contempt of court is a nice way of putting uh, you into a judge retaliation towards you uh, because you decided to speak your constitutional mind. Okay? Now, just because you go to jail and, uh, as long as you have not went through court, this now this is a detainment hearing. This is not actually a court hearing charging room it's a detainment hearing so uh, you know and, and it's a really tricky situation because you I understand we can't have this uh, run amok thing in court but he is sitting there nice and peaceful at this time 
he could have gone ahead and sent the guy back into the big population and was fine and dandy. And he was able to do so. And he didn't agree to the terms. He spoke out. And the judge can send him into the, the big population. But the judge really did not have to proceed forward on this uh, t contempt of court thing. And we go back again. Uh, contempt of court of any fashion, shape, or fashion. When you are not allowed to use your free speech at any time, is unconstitutional. Downtown. Thank you, sir. Alrighty, so we're going to just leave it there. I just thought this was really interesting uh, because I haven't seen it, but I haven't done very many of these, right? Or uh, involved myself into a whole lot of court things. Um, but these policies and rules they have is for their, you know, for the attorneys in the courtroom. It's not, you know, we, we keep being ignorant. Well, we got to have peace in court. Uh, said who? Y'all? Who says you had to sacrifice your constitution to be able to sit in that courtroom? The judge? That is the people's courtroom. That is not the judge's courtroom. Oh, but he has authority. Well, not... Why are you checking, uh, checking in? This was not actually a sentencing court. This was a detainment court. Even in a sentencing court, if, if he felt misjudged, like he just now did, then he has the right to bring it up. And he's allowed to use his Fifth Amendment of how he is uh, regressing his grievance on an unjust thing. Now again, this is my opinion. But the way I've seen this guy act, he and, and again, he's had much more serious charge to be mad about. But yet, he was mad about the little thing called a driver's license. And furious. I'm just saying, y'all. How can we uh, agree our grievance with the judge if they're acting dishonorable or uh, misjudging something that may or may not be true. Just saying, y'all. If we bend the rules of the Constitution any at all, then it just keeps bending and bending and eventually it breaks. Okay. We bend it, and now look where we are today. We have out of control police. We have out of control judges, and I'm not saying he's out of control. I'm just saying that we do have out of control judges. We have out of control lawyers. I'm not saying that guy did wrong. Uh, he's a court attorney, you know. But he didn't have anything ready for this court. I don't have anything, Your Honor. Why the fuck not? Excuse my First Amendment rights. Uh, so, you know, why would I want that court attorney, attorney to be in there to represent me of any sort of satisfaction away if he has not did the research on me? Just saying, y'all. All right, this will be the People News. Bye.